Hello and welcome to the presidential selections of the March Madness Bracket. Along with President Harvey Stanger, Jeremy Bella, and Mike Bergner, I'm Brett Nauman. Harvey, how does it feel with a perfect bracket thus far headed into the Sweet 16? I, I think I had a little help having a perfect bracket going into Sweet 16 uh, because you already wrote them up here for me, so th that's good. But from here on in, it's, uh, it's an even match, so we should be comparing those people from here on that's playing the same game that I'm playing. But that might be nobody. So I think I'll do well. All right. Let's begin with the uh, first round. Jeremy, take it away. All right. So starting in the Midwest region, we have number one Kentucky coming in at 36-0, facing off against West Virginia. Could be a close matchup. So what do you see advancing? Well, so West Virginia has Bob Huggins. And he's crazy. So then you have the fact that they beat Buffalo in their SUNY school, so we don't like that. So they've got two strikes against them, three strikes, because Kentucky is so awesome. So we're going with Kentucky. All right, so not much of an upset in that first matchup. No. So moving on to Notre Dame taking on Wichita State. Wichita State, of course, knocking off Kansas. Notre Dame. Playing pretty well so far, too. I've got a sweet spot for Notre Dame. A friend of mine is the women's head coach, Muff McGraw, and even though this is the men, not the women, I'm going to be rooting for Notre Dame because uh, Muff deserves uh, some props, too. So I'm going with the, another favorite, Notre Dame. So now we move on to the West region, where number one, Wisconsin, will face off against North Carolina. A lot of history for North Carolina, but Wisconsin, of course, led by Frank Kaminsky, great player in his own right. Wisconsin's, they've been in it every year, they're, they're doing well, they've got a tradition going, but, but I just think it's so hard to stop North Carolina when they get this far. Uh, you you got you to gotta root for that blue color sometimes, you just feel attracted to it. So I'm, I'm going for a, little, a tiny upset here, this isn't a big upset, a little upset North Carolina over Wisconsin. All right, so a little bit of an upset, a little bit. North Carolina, you got to look out for tempo in that game, mm -hmm. playing a very fast pace. So moving on to our next matchup, we have Xavier taking on Arizona. You you, you got to be looking for that that uh, sleeper that's going to kind of surprise everybody. But Arizona's a powerhouse right now. They're going to be really tough to to touch. So we're we're going to keep Arizona moving down the trail. So now we move on to the East region. We have NC State, of course, knocking off, off number one seed Villanova. And we have Louisville, to this point, coached by Rick Pitino. Always has his team ready to play. So who do you see moving on in this 8-4 matchup? I think Villanova was overrated this year. I just never thought that they were as good as their, their record. They, they play some maybe a lower-seeded RPI kind of schedule. So North Carolina State went over that. I think it's, yeah, it's okay. Uh, but not fabulous, so uh, yeah, I think Louisville's got this one pretty well. All right, an ACC matchup in that one. And moving on to Oklahoma, of course, knocking off Albany. And Michigan State, led by Tom Izzo, playing very well. They knocked off Virginia in their last matchup. It's good to see Michigan State kind of coming back and having a good season this year. Oklahoma, yeah, you can't root for them after beating Albany. Wouldn't have that been cool to have Albany actually advance one more st uh, yeah. step there? Uh, that actually helps our league, our conference too. We get an extra share if they make if they win one game. So, mad, mad at Oklahoma, Michigan State. All right. So the magic of Tom Izzo moves on. And now we'll take it to the South region, where we have number one seeded Duke facing off against number five seed Utah. Uh, Brother-in-law was a Utah football player. He would kill me if I didn't root for Utah in this one. But that seems like it's going to be a, uh, a big upset if they can pull this off. So good luck, Utah. I'm throwing you a big, a big challenge. There. I like that pick. I'll go with some upsets. I like it. He's siding with our own Brett Malamud on that pick there. Yep. All right, and then our last matchup in the Sweet 16, we have 11 seed UCLA taking on 2 seed Gonzaga. You know, I, there's just this this aura and history of UCLA basketball. The Bruins are back, and even though they haven't had that great of a season, being that low of a seed, uh, I'm going to give them I'm going to give them a pull. I'm gonna tug them over the line. Come on, UCLA. I like that. So a lot of upsets. Yes, a lot going of upsets on that side of the bracket. I'm underdog, me and myself. So moving on to the Elite Eight, we have Kentucky and Notre Dame. Oh boy, now it's getting really hard. But I'm not getting off my Notre Dame horse. 
and, and this is the place you would jump. If you were going to get off the Notre Dame horse, you would jump right now because you're going to run into a wall in Kentucky. What are they, the, they, the tallest basketball team in the, in the world right now? Or, uh, yeah. The second tallest basketball team in the world? Yeah, taller, taller than a few NBA teams. Taller than almost wow. every NBA team, I think, except Portland. So I'm going, I'm going with Notre Dame. I'm crazy, but come on. The Fighting Irish fight on. Got to be a little crazy. You got it. You're throwing out your bracket. It's March Madness. It's March Madness. March Madness. All right, moving on. North Carolina, you had them upsetting Wisconsin, taking on Arizona. Could they upset a two seed? No, this is, this is where I got to go with my personal favorites. I've, I've got a good friend who was president of University of Arizona for about seven years when they won the national championship. Uh, so I know that it will make him happy if they can continue to advance. So I'm, I'm going with uh, Arizona and my good old friend Peter Likens. All right, shout out to Peter. Louisville and Michigan State. You know, I don't care who wins that game. Now, I've got, I've got the, these, you know, the underdog coming through with Michigan State. Louisville, you know, probably you know, one of those teams that nobody really connects with uh, emotionally sometimes, Louisville. So, um, uh, you know, okay, wh why do we pick Michigan State? Uh, Magic. Magic Johnson. And get Michigan State to move on. And that's going to be a great matchup with the two coaches going at it, Tino and Izzo. Uh, Utah and UCLA. All right, now, see, the strategy here was to get Utah an easier game. So that's why I picked UCLA, so that Utah would have a little bit of a, a break coming after this one. So now I've got my Utah team moving on. The Utes in the Final Four. Utes in the Final Four. So no number one seeds no, in the Final no, Four. That happens a lot, though. There's always one or two, so yeah. I'm probably messing up there somehow. Yeah, I'm going with my so heart. I'm going with my heart. I think you're doing okay. Uh, in recent years, the average for seeds making it to the Final Four equals about 16, and yours right now is sitting around 15, 16. So I, I think you might be right on the money. Very good. Very uh, good man. Let's move on to the Final Four and look at Notre Dame taking on Arizona to move into the championship. What do you Th think? Th this is where people start to say he has no idea what he's doing <laughs> because I just go with my heart. I go with a game that I want to watch. That's what I'm going to root for. I'm going to root for the game that will make me turn on the final game, not who I really think is going to win. So even though I think Arizona is going to win that game if they play Notre Dame, I want to see Notre Dame in the finals. I think that would be pretty exciting. So, you're rational, but emotional. Nah, they've had an exciting run so far. They have. They have. Um, okay, so Michigan State versus Utah. And again, you know, Utah, have they ever been in the final four? Have they ever been to the, to the, ch the, the championship game? I don't think so. Not that I can remember. I don't think so. So wouldn't that be a great game to watch? You would, you would love to see the Utes versus uh, the Fighting Irish and, and the even though the ratings won't be what uh, a UCLA-Arizona matchup might be, this is the game that I will turn on on that Monday night. You know, you never know when we get down to this point in the game, so we'll see how it pans out. And now, this is it. Coin toss here. So you got a number five against a number three. Uh, where is the finals? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Okay. Ooh, Notre Dame's got the home court advantage there, don't they? Um, you know, my heart says, you, you know, okay, so here it is. Big time sports, the, the, the big five, whatever they are, the 65 teams that want to take over Division One, the Super Division One. Um, they're not left in here. We, we've got some, some just kind of good old schools, and I think the, the lowest ranked school in this whole category of big time sports is Utah, so I'm going for the, the big underdog here, Utah. Youth. He's taking Notre Dame's luck running out in the finals. <laughs> the Utah Utes, champions of President Harvey Stanger's bracket. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Brett. Thanks very much. Thank you. From all of us here at BFPN, I'm Brett, President Harvey Stanger. I'm Jeremy Bella. Mike Bergner. See you later.